Good evening and welcome to What Happens. This week we examine what happens to spit after it hits the sidewalk. To examine this phenomenon, we have renowned spitologist Dave Markov. Dave, welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me. Well, Dave, let's get down to it. Just what happens to spit after it hits the sidewalk? Well, let me ask you this. What kind of spit is it? Is it the real mucousy type or the real bubbly type, like you, the kind you get after you drink a quart of eggnog? Well, let's say the real bubbly type, the type that you'd get after you drink a quart of eggnog. Well, with that type, then, actually not much. You see, that type is mainly all air. After the bubbles pop, there really isn't that much to it then. Uh, and despite what you might think, the bubbles do pop rather quickly. No kidding. No, seriously. It's only a matter of a few minutes at most. I never knew that. It's true. Well then, okay then, what about the real mucousy type? Ah, now you're getting to the meat of spit. Oh yeah? Oh yes, positively. The more mucus and less saliva, the better. Positively, nasty stuff can happen with this kind of saliva. Really? Oh yes. Now the least exciting thing that can happen to it after it hits the sidewalk would be that it would rain out or that it was raining at the time of the spit itself. If it was raining or it rains soon after the spit, basically nothing happens. It, uh, it gets washed away. But, yes. but if it's hot, really hot, like it was this past summer, a lot of things can happen. Like? Well, its lifespan expands tremendously. Um, it hardens and what it does, it seals itself tight to the sidewalk, using every pore of the sidewalk to fasten itself. This makes it resistance to shoe scuffing, which really is the primary enemy of, of the spit itself. Um, shoes, you see, will break down a spit with its crushing power, and either it will crack it, or if it's not quite hard, it smears it. And if it gets smeared, the spit's got a little, a little chance of getting some revenge by t adhering itself to the bottom of the shoe, then picking up little pieces of paper, gum wrappers, or uh, even toilet paper if the person has recently visited a public restroom. And of course, this gets pretty embarrassing. <laughs> Fascinating. Uh, if it does get a chance to harden, um, then it goes through, I guess what we could call a metamorphosis, where it can turn up to 10 different colors, some of the uh, most disgusting colors you will ever see. <laughs> uh, the number of colors, um, if I can add, depends on where and what the individual was doing before the spit. Uh, if he was somewhere where there was a lot of uh, smoke and a lot of dirt, say a pancake house, for example, uh, the number of colors could be very, very high. But uh, if perhaps he was in a non-smoking office with a filtered air conditioner, uh, then the spit would be rather monochrome. Well, then I guess then for the spitologist, the best one would be from someone who, let's say, works in construction or uh, a lumber mill. Oh, now you're making my mouth water. <laughs> well, when did you first become interested in spitology? Well, really, it was when I was younger, uh, playing baseball through a little league system. Uh, and it developed from there. What can I say? Um, the discovery of chewing tobacco had a profound effect on my life. Well, I, I can imagine. You know, a lot of people would say that uh, studying spit is a considerable waste of time and money. Uh, how would you reply to such a statement? Well, it gives me a job, doesn't it? And it keeps me off the streets. But, uh, of course, studying spit, uh, it really does uh, have its benefits. Uh, in, in what ways? Well, in the fields of uh, biology and archaeology, for example. Uh, you would be surprised what kind of insects get trapped in the spit we find. Uh, sort of a tar pit effect, if you will. Uh, when it hardens, they get fossilized. Well, this is getting quite disgusting, and so I'm going to end this edition of What Happens Right Now. But I, I brought some slides to show. <laughs> well, not on this show you don't. Please? No, besides, I think this whole spitology thing is rather silly. It gives me a job. Quiet. It's absurd, it's gross, it's sick, and I think it's a terrible subject for a show. Well, then why were you so nice to me before the show and you, you said all those nice things that you were glad to see me? Well, you see, I only said those, uh, I only saying these things that we don't get letters a little later on about how stupid and awful this uh, segment was. Oh. Besides, I bet you I'm not the only one who thinks this pathology idea was a terrible thing. I didn't think it was a bad idea, at least not as bad as an Insane War Tomato concert. Insane War Tomato concert? I'd go, if I had earplugs. And I was heavily armed, sedated. <laughs>